Hello, friends, and welcome to Activate and Thrive and our weekly Thriving Thursday interview, where we speak with different beautiful health-minded individuals about many topics related to health. Uh, and today, we're very, very happy to have a guest who's going to talk with us about mindset. Now, we have these uh, interviews every Thursday at noon Eastern US time, uh, right on our page, Activate and Thrive in Facebook. And they are also uh, on YouTube. So if you're watching them live right now or on YouTube later or on Facebook later, any way you're doing it, we're very happy to have you. So we are so in for a special treat today. <laughs> our guest, Jessica Crate, was born in Canada, grew up in the US, she received a full ride at Arizona State and Florida State in track and cross country. And there she studied pre-med and biological sciences, minored in psychology and French. And then she was in pharmaceutical sales in the corporate world and medical device sales for years. And then left that to build her dreams, <laughs> her own dreams. And not only is this woman an elite marathon runner, but she's also a five-time world champion Team USA triathlete. Amazing. She's a motivational speaker. She speaks all over the world. She's involved in multiple charities and uh, nonprofit, you know, just get philanthropy. And she is just such a beautiful soul. Oh my gosh. Don and I, Don and I are so grateful to be on this health journey, uh, along with Jessica, and yes, being healthy, along with whatever it is we want to accomplish in life, requires the correct mindset, that successful mindset. It's very much connected. So fasten your seatbelts because we are just going to be so blessed by this woman today. So Jessica, welcome. Welcome, Jessica. Oh my goodness. You guys are amazing. And it's so fun to hang out with you on here and you right back at you. I'm honored to be on here with you both and you inspire me and you also both crack me up. Dawn, you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for having me on this morning. Oh, our gift, our pleasure. So you want to kick sure. it off? Sure. Well, um, you know, as we know, we're going to talk all about the, the critical um, importance of mindset in our lives with anything we're going to do. Um, you know, prominent life coach Tony Robbins says that uh, success is 80%, 80% mindset and 20% strategy and execution. I mean, that's crazy because we get so caught up in all the things we have to do to accomplish something. Where is our mindset first and foremost? So Jessica, talk to us about how you help someone who's struggling with their mindset or hasn't even thought about mindset, people who maybe get distracted easily, just to becoming more pur purposeful in cultivating a champion mindset. Talk to us about that. Well, first of all, I love that you brought forward Tony Robbins and, and it is, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's 90%, 99%, whatever percentage of mindset it is, it's also the strategy and execution. And, and so we'll talk about that. And it, first of all, you have to make a decision, decide what your mindset's going to be, and then start making a strategy of how you're going to take those action steps to execute that mindset every single second of every single day, because life throws us curveballs, right? We've all been through a huge curveball this past year. And, and so it really is the battle of the mind, those six inches between your ear and, and saying, hey, like, how can I step it forward into becoming a warrior or, or a goddess warrior or whatever you want to call it, stepping into that and, and know that winning the battle of the mind is, is the launching pad to greatness. You know, you win the battle of the mind first and foremost in the morning, and, and that is your ticket to unlocking the greatness in all things in life and, you know, body, mind, and soul. And, yeah. and so what I like to think about is, as you know, like a mindset, the warrior mindset is doing whatever it takes, you know, whatever it takes to be prepared because warriors just don't set out to survive. Like we don't wake up and go, I hope I just get through today. You know, we, we want to make sure we thrive in our days and, and in our weeks and in our moments and, and so to win. And at the end of the day, life is, is nothing but a mind game. And so it's important that you play to win and you play to win because your life depends on it. I and love that. It's, it's powerful, isn't it? When you think about it like that. 
And, you know, so ways to cultivate it, right? So when you're thinking about, okay, yeah, like, okay, great. I have a great mindset. I feel great. I wake up, clap your hands. It's going to be a great day. You know, like, I think it was like 15 years ago, um, some people I worked with, they were like, you know, every morning I wake up before my feet hit the ground, I clap three times and I say, it's going to be a great day. So whatever your, whatever your thing is, you know, I love filling a glass up full of water and drinking a full glass of water before I get out of bed, you know, getting up and yeah, saying it's going to be a great day and shifting that mindset forward. Um, but five key things that we'll, we can dive into, but five key things to, to really help you to become and develop a champion mindset, because, you know, it's so much more than being aggressive or determined. It's, it's all the things of overcoming challenges, overcoming adversity, shifting that mindset forward and, and processing, you know, the understanding, you know, being able to utilize a set of psychological, physical, emotional skills that allow someone to be adaptive and, and persistent in that. Because it is, it's a, it's a game that you play every day with these six inches between your ears. It's like, oh my goodness, my mind controls everything. Yeah, you think about it, it does. So um, five key things. The first one is sleep. And oh my goodness, when I was in my 20s, I'm like, oh yeah, you sleep when you're dead, right? Yeah. No, now I'm like, give me a pillow. I know, I'm a mama <laughs> bear. I'm a mama bear. I guard that sleep very preciously. <laughs> right, totally. And you know, if you're wondering how to get better sleep, um, Dr. Michael Bruce does um, chronotypes. And so you can go on and you can take your sleep test and figure out, you know, what type of sleeper you are and how to better improve your sleep to go from, you know, just an average sleeper to a great sleeper because it does affect your life, right? It's when our body is in recovery mode, right? hundred percent. Yeah. You, you know, you repair, you recover, you rejuvenate while you're resting. Mm -hmm. So in the morning you feel fueled mm -hmm. and that battery can recharge. Um, so sleep is so, so important. It develops fortitude for life, right? Absolutely. And then we talked about it, you know, I'm drinking my hot Axio right now, but in the morning, you know, when you're taking a shower, mm. you start out with five seconds of a cold shower at the end, or, you know, if you can take a cold shower, just jump in and, or jump in the ocean. We're out here in California this week and go do something that, you know, shocks your metabolism yeah. makes you feel alive. That's why I love cold showers is, you know, I don't necessarily take one for an hour. No, but, you know, even if you just turn that, turn the shower cold at the end, helps your hair, helps your skin, but it also wakes you up. And it's amazing what it does to boost your brain and your body and your metabolism. So cold showers develop resilience because it's not cushy and warm. You got to like get up and get going, right? Absolutely. You know, I have to tell you, I've just recently, probably in the last month, been doing that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm always cold. So, yeah. you know, I like to be warm. So I take my hot shower and then I'm like, okay, here it comes. Yeah. <laughs> and I just allow it to just pour over me. And then you feel so invigor invigorated mm -hmm. when you get out of the shower invigorated. Yep. That's, that's a great word too. And it, you know, we're driving by a Navy base out here. We're out here in California, Southern California, and they don't just get up and go, Oh, I'm just going to have a nice hot tub. No. Oh, they like are dive into this freezing ocean and they were out there doing their, their thing. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, develops resilience, you know, yeah. get you invigorated, get you ready to like jumpstart the day because you don't move slow when you're cold, you move quicker when you're jumping oh, yeah. out of the cold. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Um, so that's you number feel. two. Yeah. <laughs> number three is one of my favorites and whatever way you do this, you know, meditation, whether it's yoga, whether it's journaling, uh, whether it's running, moving meditation, or whether it's just sitting and visualizing, um, that brings us to visualization, which is the fourth one. But meditation is so key, just calming your mind, getting grounded. You know, I like to walk outside on grass or, you know, just get in touch with nature, just get rooted. And when you can get rooted to flourish, it's so key and calming your mind. You know, you both do it and you both did it with me preparing for for this interview, preparing for the day. And meditation is so key to success. And whether it's just, you know, going into yoga and just setting an intention, 
um, or, you know, whatever you do, setting that intention. And we'll talk more about this, but meditation is a spiritual shower. It really is. Yeah. I love that. A spiritual shower. I'm going to quote you on that one. Yeah. (laughs) The spiritual shower of meditation. Um, Oh, sorry. No, please go ahead. No, go for it. Well, I just want to say, you know, we don't start out as champions. We don't necessarily start out with the right mindset. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us about how you personally cultivate or started to cultivate or can, I guess you're talking about how you continue to cultivate it, but, but what helped you personally on the journey towards the the mindset of a champion with the things you've accomplished? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and a lot of things that have led me to that have been, you know, growing up in environment that when you're an athlete, you don't just train to train, you train to win. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of the life lessons you bring into that and the things you have to go through, you know, you fail a lot, (laughs) you know, you have to fail a lot to be good. And I think it's the things behind the scenes that a lot of people don't see that, you know, not everybody sees that you take a cold shower in the morning before you run into a meeting. But when you show up to that meeting prepared and your whole aura, your whole body, mind, and soul has been preparing for that event. So you don't have to just be an athlete. You know, I, I liked the quote by Bill Bowerman who founded Nike. If you have a body, you are an athlete. So treat it as such, you know, whatever you're trying to do in life, if you're just trying to be a better mom, if you're just trying to walk more efficiently, if you just need to get out there and be on your computer and get things done in a more focused manner, whatever you're doing to cultivate that, be a champion in whatever niche you're in. And, and so going through a lot of the failures in life to answer your question, a lot of the, the trials and tribulations, you know, because you're like, you, you don't just let it beat you down. You have, you have to stand on those and keep moving forward. It's like that analogy of the donkey, right? Yeah. Galloping along and he falls in the hole (laughs) and people keep throwing dirt on him thinking he's just going to die. But no, he's stepping onto those failures, stepping onto that dirt, stepping onto the, the, you know, things people are telling him he can't do. And all of a sudden there's enough dirt that he just gallops right on by and he pops out of that hole. And he's like, Hey, yeah, hit me again. Cause I know what I can do to move forward. So, you know, um, developing that resilience and, and whatnot. And um, one of the last things too, that I wanted to share is visualization. Visualization is so key to success. I know you two do it. And you think about if you say, Hey, I am going to get that house. You're, you're not going to not do it. You're going to go and you're going to figure out the ways to go get that house. Yeah. Um, I was on a podcast the other day and it was like this mom with nine kids and she's like, I'm going to build my dream home. And so she goes out and she's like, well, how do I build a dream home? I'm not a contractor. You know, I'm not a realtor. She's like, I love this plot of land. How do I, how do I purchase this plot of land? She gets the plot of land and she's like, wow, it's way out of my budget. But I'm going to put an offer on it. And then she goes, well, if I subdivide it, and then I do X, Y, and Z. And so she goes down this path, right? And she figures out how to pur- purchase and make her dream home. And, and so I think the biggest thing too is, is you know, visualization exercises and, and doing those things, make a vision board, write it down. And I think there's magic with, you know, pen to paper. It's just that cognitive exercise rather than just typing something, draw it out, write it out, journal it. And um, visualization is so key to success. And then the last thing that has helped me is, is nutrition. I oh, wouldn't yeah. be where I'm at without fueling my body like an athlete and my mind like an athlete and having those things that help me to stay focused and stay clear and, and reset my day. Like there is not a morning I don't go without biohacking every single morning. And sometimes throughout the day, I am biohacking. So um, nutrition is super key for me too, because you think about your health, you can't, if you don't help yourself, you can't help anyone else. And whenever yes. your health is failing, it affects everyone around you in a negative sense. So if you can fuel yourself appropriately and make sure you get yourself in check, um, you'll be more present and more aware and, and better for everyone else around you. So for our guests that just heard you say that word, biohacking, that may not know, you know, what we're talking about. Can you just, just lightly touch on that? What is biohacking? 
It's one of my favorite things now. I know it sounds like a crazy word. And when I heard it 10 years ago, I was like, biohacking? Like, are you trying to hack my computer? <laughs> like, but bio, biology and hacking. So hacking your biology to achieve optimal human potential. You know, our bodies are amazing biological machines. And if you can tap into the little nuances that flip those switches throughout your system, you can flip on the pathways to help your body regulate itself, to bring up the good antioxidants, bring down the bad levels and help your body start functioning like a well-oiled machine. And so I feel like I flipped the switch and I know you guys have too. And instead of just supplementing your body, you're now activating your body and you're helping your body to stay in balance to recover faster, to sleep deeper, to wake up feeling more refreshed, to have more natural energy throughout the day, clear that brain fog and get laser focused. And so I think biohacking is so key. And if you guys want to know more about it, we can go down that rabbit hole. In yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, I wanted to just uh, share that uh, recently in the last few days, it was shared with me that Yale did a study that said that if we spend 70% of our days of our day doing things mm -hmm. that we've never done before, first timers, mm -hmm. you know, that really challenge us to mm -hmm. step out of our comfort zone, that that's what we need to do to really cultivate the mindset for success. And, you know, that's a, that's a biggie. Cause I look 70% of my day. Do I do things that I've never done before? Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, that's absolutely, that's huge. <laughs> that's you know? one of the biggest things. And, you know, there's nine keys in cultivating a champion mindset while developing that spirit of a warrior. You know, you want to have that spirit, right? That spirit that manifests clarity and focus and determination. But one of them is do something you're afraid of every day. And Don, when you asked me too, like, wh what are some of those things? It's like, do something you're afraid of. If it's having that tough conversation or asking a difficult question or just getting out and going, I'm not really sure if I can run, go try it. I'm not really sure. Chicken if list, I yoga, right? Go the try chicken, it. You know, yeah, fail forward, you yeah. know, yeah, practice fail. makes progress, not perfection. But yeah. when you do something you're afraid of every day, it's amazing because you go, oh, what was I really afraid of? And you think about it and you're like, I was afraid of massive success. In mm -hmm. the end, that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. You're just afraid to be courageous. And so practice being courageous in the little things and it's the compound effect it leads to massive success over time. And when you do it, you feel so good and you feel so grateful and you mm -hmm. know, gratitude, that's another one, right? 100%. Well, um, do you want to ask something about the, I mean, I, we understand that you uh, basically stepped away from kind of the speaking of getting out of what's comfortable and doing what's right. scary. You yourself stepped away from the comforts of a successful, cushy corporate um, career and you embraced mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. So that must have been scary, must have been exciting in some ways, but. Oh my goodness, I was shaking in my own shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember just going, you know, I just was sick and tired of being in the corporate world. Yes. Amazing career. I was so grateful for, you know, like having such a great income and all the benefits and all the perks and the company car and all the, all the cushy things that make you feel comfortable in life. Mm -hmm. But I just felt like I hit, kept hitting a ceiling. There was just like, I'm like, well, I felt like a cog in a machine going through the motions every day. And it was like, you know, fortunately my days were semi different being in medical device and pharmaceutical sales. And you could kind of create an entrepreneurial lifestyle, but at the end of the day, you're working for someone else. You're building someone else's dream. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, there's gotta be more to life that, you know, I want to wake up when my body's done sleeping. I want to choose where I travel and when I take a break and when I do vacation and, and who I get to work with. Yeah. And so I was just, I was praying for a way out of that industry. And and really just feeling like I was in a sick care industry and wanting to be in, in, a, in an environment that would help me thrive, not only myself, because I didn't take pharmaceuticals myself, but I was like, what, what could I do to stop getting injured as an athlete? I'm sick and tired of getting injured as an athlete. I'm sick and tired of getting sick. <laughs> and I want to do something that can create change. And so when I was introduced to entrepreneurship, I think 
I think I always had like an entrepreneurial bone in my body or blood running through, you know, when I was a kid, like, you know, paper routes, selling pumpkins or, you know, crazy things you do when you're, when you're a kid, but going, oh my goodness, this is it. And having that first taste of entrepreneurship and going, this is it. And then going, okay, do you like kind of dabble in it? Do you cut the ties that hold you back and you step forward into it? And I think that's one of the biggest things. The first step in getting what you want is getting rid of what doesn't serve you mm-hmm. and what's holding you back. Yeah. And so that, that a lot of times is scary. And sometimes you have to kind of like the hot air balloon, slowly cut those ties that are holding you on the ground in order to start lifting off the ground. But it is, it was a huge step to go, man, I, I just, I know that this is my calling. I've got to be an entrepreneur and being a lifestyle entrepreneur and going, what are the different things I can mesh into my life that allow me to do what I love, be around people that I love and help me thrive. And so, um, if you, if you're thinking about, Hey, I am just not happy. I'm stuck. Start doing more of the little things that spark joy. Mm. And over time, all those things will accumulate together and you'll go, wow, I'm doing a little bit more of this and letting go of some of that and bringing more of this into my life. And And soon you'll be like, wow, I just feel so full rather than feeling so drained. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. We all have to do what makes our hearts sing, you know, you know, so that we can just feel like we are being true to our purpose, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and that we're really having a a footprint and an imprint on humanity. And doesn't it take a lot of trust to take these steps out of our comfort zone. Uh, It seems to me trusting first and foremost, the real you, right? Trusting Mm -hmm. that 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 is there, that's going to take you through. Mm -hmm. And certainly one scary thing for people can be is is, is the financial part of it. Well, if I take this step because I want to realize my dreams, I I can't let go of X or Y because that's bringing me the bread and butter. Right. To to have the courage to say, no, I'm going to stand up for this other thing because it's time. And I'm Mm going to know that the, that, the supply is going to be there because my mindset is shifting and I'm trusting in me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you experienced that? Yeah, I love that you brought that forward because it, it is, you have to first love you, who you are. And, you know, so write down, write, write down, what is it that you really want? What do you really want out of life? We get one shot at this cool thing, right? Mm-hmm. At least as far as I know, but right. one shot at this cool thing called life. And what is it you really, really want? Write it down that maybe draw out a list and then, you know, what is it you really want your heart to show the world? Like, what is it you want to shine through and what is it that legacy? And then, well, what do you really want your mindset to be? And then what do you really want your life to look like? And that's where the visualization and all the things come forward because now you have a goal. Now you have something you're striving for. And you can trust yourself because you're doing the little incremental things throughout the day. You're taking the cold shower. You're getting a good sleep. You're fueling yourself. You feel great. And now you're like, man, I have the tools and resources that allow me to take that next step forward in achieving all those things that I'm looking to do in life. Um, But it does take trust in yourself and, and those little incremental things that you can go, Hey, I trust myself enough to get a good sleep. I trust myself to feel my body appropriately. I trust myself to, you know, surround myself in a thriving environment with great relationships and great people. And, and you keep doing those little things. And soon you're like, I feel unstoppable. And like some of the things that Tony Robbins brings, and I know you guys went through his master course and it's, you know, doing those things that turn straw into gold, you know, doing those things that, you know, our greatest suffering produces the greatest opportunity, right? And so looking at those things and taking incremental steps towards that, it's so exciting because anyone can do it. Yeah. You know, um, I love that. I know that you've, you know, you've been involved in in the charity work Mm -hmm. and, you know, what, what would you say is your greatest accomplishment? What would you feel like um, just makes your heart sing more than anything? I mean, I know we're all part of this wellness revolution and, you know, that we all care about, you know, being the healthiest versions of ourselves, um, mind, body, spirit. But what would you say 
um, really brings out Jessica's, you know, joy more than anything. Well, I'm working on a few things that you guys will probably see on Facebook or social media this week or this weekend um, that really have sparked joy in my life. But, you know, there's so many things and it, it almost brings me to tears to think about it because it's like, you know, just creating a legacy and, and paying things forward and doing the little things that you may not get credit for and that you can, you know, just even if you help one person, like I love going overseas and doing mission trips. And part of that has been hard because of COVID and not being able to go and, you know, go over there and going, okay, well, what can I do here where I'm at right now? And, um, you know, one of the, one of my biggest accomplishments, I guess, is getting married. <laughs> getting yes, married congratulations on that too. And, and, you know, finding your soulmate, but that too causes you to, you know, tear down a lot of walls that you build up and, you know, be in a partnership and walk through that journey and walk down that road and, and want to better someone else and each other. And, um, marriage is such a blessing. It's so cool. It's wild. (laughs) It is. You're a newlywed, but we've been at it for over 20 years. I know. So I should be interviewing you on the next podcast. Okay. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Love that. You know, we, we really, uh, it's just so love having you here. We, hate to bring it to a oh close. My gosh. We, we do like to respect people's time and um, this has just flown just, by. Yeah, we, we could we could go for another <laughs> half hour or longer. But uh, Jessica Crate, we just want to thank you so very much for joining us at Activate and Thrive. And I think we got some wonderful ideas about mindset and even something related to our, our physical health that can certainly have a big impact on mindset. And you talked about biohacking and we're all part of something that, mm-hmm. that really brings a very special activation to our bodies. And if anybody wants to know more about that, please feel free to connect with us. Uh, our physical health is a critical part of of having a healthy mindset overall. And uh, again, we thank everybody for joining us today. Jessica, do you have any final thing you'd like to share share with us? (laughs) Just go out there, cultivate a champion mindset and live a life that demands an explanation. Keep thinking outside the box because if you can think it, you can live it, you can dream it, you can do it. So live a life that demands an explanation. And thank you so much, me and Don. That's I wonderful. love you guys oh, so much. Thank you so much. Our joy. You. Thanks, everyone. We look forward to seeing you next Virtual week. Virtual hugs. Yes, Until absolutely. we can do it in person. And we look forward to seeing you next week at Thriving Thursday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye for now.